Welcome back. So for the final effect here in our video edit, I'm going to show you guys how to do uh, this, basically motion tracking our footage and putting in some cool text with kind of a realistic look that matches our scene. Um, so I know there's different ways to do this. The way that I used was uh, relying upon After Effects and Cinema 4D. Um, there's plugins you can get for After Effects to do this, but uh, it's my favorite way of doing it, and it makes the workflow easy um, with the Maxon exporter from After Effects, and uh, it just allows you to do a lot more. So let's get started. We're going to jump into After Effects. All right, so I'm in After Effects, and I've just brought in my, um, I've rendered out my footage I want to use for my track. Um, so it's a good idea to do this first. Um, you know, I just edited it in Premiere Pro. I didn't add any color effects to it. And um, let's go ahead and get started. So all we all we need to do now that it's here is go up to the um, file export and the Maxon Cinema 4D exporter. Uh, for some reason, mine is not working right now. I need to figure out why the port is uh, busy. It's probably because I have a couple different versions of it for different different things. So. Um, but that should work for you. Um, otherwise, you can just bring it into Cinema 4D manually. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm in Cinema 4D now, and uh, I'm going to just walk you through uh, how this works from the very start. This is my finished project here. So we're going to do New Project, and I'm immediately going to change my layout to be the Motion Tracker layout. Um, and all we have to do now is just click the Motion Tracker button down here in the lower left. And that's going to bring up uh, all the options we're going to need to get started. So the first things first is we need to bring in our footage. Okay, so I've got my footage in here. Um, by default, it's only at 33% sampling. You can up this if you want to make your resolution look better. But um, for now, I'm going to leave it low because we don't need to do anything um, and visualize anything yet. But if you hit play down here in the bottom, you'll see that your footage has come in and uh, it's playing and it should automatically know the the frame rate so we don't need to mess with that at all um, so over here on the right we're going to start with the footage settings um, first thing we can do is uh, we can create a background object um, that'll kind of help you design your scene because we're not going to see this footage um, in a second uh, if we scroll down, you'll see we've got our frame rate set, um, or sorry, our, our resolution set. Um, so we're going to jump into 2D tracking. And um, I'm going to leave everything default. You might want to if it's a complex scene or if um, you're going to have things in the distance you're going to want to attach. So you might want to just up this to 500, something like that. Um, and we're just going to hit create auto track. Um, and that's just going to kind of show us these tracks, but what we're going to want to do is we're just going to hit auto track and this is going to run this process and it's going to go through all the frames and you'll see in a second what the result is. Okay, so we've finished, so we can just click play and you'll see that we've got some tracking points stuck inside of our scene. Not a lot, but that's okay. We're not, we haven't done a 3D solve yet. So uh, over here in the right, we're gonna click 3D solve and I'm gonna leave everything as, as is as well. Um, if you know that your sensor size is different or something is, is different than these settings, then I'd experiment with that. But this is, it does a pretty good job automatically. So we're gonna click run 3D solver and we're just gonna let this run. All right, so it's now finished. So now we've created this solved camera. If you go up to the upper right here and you expand motion tracker, um, now we have a solved camera. Um, and if we play this through, basically the green dots are giving us an indication of what's in the foreground. And the, then they transition to pink and they kind of go back into our, our background. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of track this forward. We can see that these are doing a pretty good job of tracking. So 
this is a good thing to work with here. Um, if you want, we can jump into some of our different views and you can kind of see how these points are laid out. So if I look at my front view, you can see it's doing a pretty good job based on the angle of the camera of putting my points all throughout my scene. Um, so uh, you'll notice that this plane by default is off. Um, that may be something that uh, that we want to mess with. Um, and you can, a you can actually go in and create some po position restraints and actually draw a um, draw a planar constraint which is essentially um, going to just be you selecting what the what the ground plane is by clicking on three points um, so if you wanted to do that you can do that um, but we're not going to worry about that in this tutorial we're just going to kind of go through it with what we have and adjust things on the fly so to show you how this works, I'm just going to drop a cube into my scene and by default it's going to be massive. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and I am going to drag this bad boy down until it's very small. Like I said, it's probably going to be right in front of your camera. That's okay, we're going to fix this in a second. Um, so I'm just going to turn that cube off for a second. And I, want to, I know I want to put it kind of out in that lake, but I need to make sure that I've got a point fixed out there which I do. I notice that this pink point right here is kind of where I want to put uh, my object or in the case of the video, my text. So if I look under my auto features here, I'm going to look for the one that is highlighted and there's a lot of them. So once we find it, we're, we're just going to drag this all the way up to the top and that way I can easily access that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cube and I'm just going to drop it in and make it a child. And then I'm going to go to my coordinates and I'm going to zero out all my coordinates. Okay, so now I've got a cube in my scene and we're going to go ahead and size this up. It's now in 3D world. And then I'll move it up a little bit to kind of be even with that point on the bottom. And this is where the planar constraint would be nice automatically, but this isn't too much too difficult of a job to just kind of rotate this around a little bit. Um, and so now we can click play and there we go. We've got the biggest step done already. Our cube is doing a great job of tracking in our scene. And this is mimicking the text that we had um, for, the, for the Iceland text. Okay, so what we can do now, now, we, now that we know it's tracking well, is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to add a Mo text. And I'll do the same thing. I'll make it a child. And I'm going to go ahead and zero out coordinates. And then we're going to have to make it quite a bit smaller. And now I'm just going to hide my cube. And I'm going to play with my 3D text so that I'm ready to put it in my scene. Once I like where it's at, then I can adjust a couple things. I can make my depth a little bit bigger, maybe something like 0.6. Okay, and now we're good to go. So um, now what we're gonna do is we are going to just add a quick physical light, uh, sky here. And we're gonna need to make sure that uh, when we come in here, that we are gonna do some render tags. And this needs to be a compositing tag. And we may need to make it a compositing background. So that way, um, when we do a quick render here, oops, we're gonna make sure it's not seen by the camera. And that's the sky, but we still have the lighting effects. You can see that they're active now. And if I turn it off, you can see what the difference is. So we've made a huge improvement to our scene with some, some artificial lighting here. Um, okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a plane. And I'm gonna do the exact same process I did before, make it a child, come down here to the coordinates and let's zero it out. And we're going to leave it the same size, but I'm going to adjust it and rotate it and kind of try to mimic the 
lake that I have there. Um, so let's just kind of pull this in a little bit. And I might have to even jump out of my soft camera to kind of grab this side, crank that in a little bit. Um, so you can see I'm doing a pretty good job of matching that plane of the lake. And if we do a quick render preview, we can see um, that I'm getting some shadowing now uh, here on the text. But maybe, maybe that's not matching my scene. And I can already see from some of the shadows down here that the sun is actually over in this area of the sky and not, um, not over here, which this would indicate. So not to worry, we can go to our physical sky and we can just start adjusting the time and location to see. Um, and I think it's gonna have to require me to go later in the day to get that side lighting and I can already see I'm starting to starting to match that and so let's go a little bit further okay so now I think I kind of like um, where I'm at with my with my shadows um, I can just kind of keep going a little bit longer and keep matching that up um, you may not love what you get from the physical sky and part of that is just because the the distance is so far away um, that you know look how much depth I put on my text and if I look here you know I'm getting a good shadow but because of the view you're gonna have a hard time getting a, a really big shadow on that text using physical skies so this is where we might switch over and add actually just a, um, a spotlight so I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna give it the same treatment just put it at zero zeroed out now it's over there in my scene and I'm gonna jump out of my soft camera and I'm gonna play with moving this light around so at this point I'm I can probably jump back into my soft camera and I can do a little preview and yeah, we're not getting nearly what we need um, for as far as lighting. But now we can kind of drag this around and adjust some things to match um, our scene. Now obviously don't pay attention to the light that's being cast on this um, quite yet. That's not going to matter in a second. This is really just finding out if we're getting, we're getting this into the right position. We might even want to add just like another light that's just kind of like a fill um, and give it like a little bit of a blue tint and then giving our spotlight a little bit of a yellow tint to kind of mimic what we would see really happening here. Um, I'm even going to up the intensity of my sunlight just a little bit too. So that's starting to look pretty cool. Um, you know, if I get rid of my plane, you can see like can't really tell from that but it's starting to it's starting to look good in my scene um, so if I go ahead and turn my plane back on and I'm gonna go back to my uh, standard standard or startup view I'm gonna create a uh, material and I'm just gonna create a standard I'm sorry I'm gonna create a shadow catcher material that I'm going to drag onto my plane and by default it's just gonna make everything black and that's what you want you, you want that uh, that to not be showing you anything in the scene um, okay so we're gonna go ahead and save this save project as we'll call it the uh, tutorial cool and now I'm gonna jump back into After Effects and bear with me as I get some of these warnings um, that are going to happen, but I'm going to create a new comp, and we are going to go ahead and import the uh, tutorial Cinema 4D file that we just created. Okay, I've got my tutorial uh, footage in here, and I'm going to switch over to my final view here. And you'll notice this is what you should be looking at. You should be looking at nothing in your scene whatsoever. 
And then all we need to do is drag back in the aerial title without any effects and put it on the bottom. And there we go. We've got a very cool looking um, setup here with a nice shadow that's being cast across the lake. And the cool thing too is that this tutorial C4D file is separate from our footage. So now we can come over in After Effects and we could, you know, we could add some cool things like we could make this glow a little bit since it's kind of distant on the horizon. Giving a little bit of a glow makes it look much more realistic. Now we might need to play with the glow radius and, uh, you know, the threshold. And we could even change the color a little bit, um, but that might be something that you want to change um, and do a better job of that in Cinema 4D with your material. But So there we go. So that's pretty much um, how you do it. Um, the only other thing I can tell you is that when I was in Cinema 4D, um, I also created this uh, material that I wanted to put on my text. And so I made it a little bit reflectant, um, just, a, just a touch. And then I also created uh, a nice uh, surface that was a simple turbulence to kind of give it like an ice, an ice look, something like that, right? So let's go ahead and drag that into our text. And if we just uh, save it, we should get, well, I won't unfortunately get an update because I, not have I have this stupid bug with 74D not talking to my After Effects. Uh, so if anyone knows how to fix that, I'm all ears on comments. But I would need to essentially save the project, and then I would just go ahead and re-import it. Um, and now I'll drag this in, and I will get rid of that. And let's make it the standard final view. All right, so now I've got a little bit of a interesting texture that I'm just going to add my um, my glow effect to, and there we go. And now when we're full screen, we can see a little bit of that simple turbulence inside of the text. But that's how to do the uh, the most advanced um, effect. Um, it will increase your render times a little bit when you do this but you're going to stand out from everybody else if you can learn this technique. It's something that I love uh, showcasing in videos and even using it to put 3D models inside of video footage. And you really, if you have a client, if you're making an edit, you're going to stand apart from other people. So hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.